those of you who have asked me to try taking a rail trip report, tonight I'm taking the Caledonian sleeper service from here at London Euston Station all the way up to Glasgow in Scotland, trying out their new club rooms. They claim that the new club rooms are more like staying in a hotel room than travelling on a train, and I'm really looking forward to trying them out. Let's head inside and take the Caledonian sleeper up to Scotland. There are two Caledonian sleeper services departing London Euston every evening. The Lowlanders service serves Edinburgh and Glasgow, and the Highlanders serves Aberdeen, Fort William and Inverness. Both trains leave Euston with all passengers on board before splitting along the route into separate trains. Passengers in club rooms on board the Caledonian sleeper can use the Virgin Trains first class lounge at Euston. My train was due to depart at 9.34pm and we were allowed to board from 9pm. Check-ins completed on the platform where you ticked off the list. Hello there, good evening. Thanks very much, thank you. The Cali Sleepers recently introduced these brand new carriages which contain a new lounge car and brand new rooms. They've had a few teething problems with them though, and on the night I travelled there were only half the number of coaches compared to normal, thanks to some wheel problems. I boarded the train and headed for my club room in coach K. Seem too bad. After dropping my bag, I headed for the club car to get a drink ahead of my journey up to Scotland. The club car sells a range of food and drink on board. I opted for a wee dram of whiskey to get my Scottish trip started early. The prices are pretty steep, but no more so than on board a flight. As we leave Euston behind, let's take a look at our route today. Usually the Caledonian sleeper takes the west coast line up through Manchester and up to Scotland that way. Tonight however, due to line maintenance work, we took the east coast line north to York, Newcastle and Edinburgh before crossing the lowlands of Scotland towards Glasgow. Journey time this evening was 9 hours and 42 minutes. I sat and sipped on one of my favourite Scotch whiskies as we rolled out of Euston, La Frog Single Malt. This was a pricey £6.70 a shot, but nonetheless tasted delicious. As we rolled towards Wembley, there was a complete power outage throughout the train. We enjoyed the mood lighting for a while before power was restored a few minutes later. The train stopped at Wembley for around 40 minutes in order for the engine to change ends. Back from the club car, which was really nice, I had a little glass of whiskey there. While we sat here in Wembley sidings, just the north of London, and now we're heading the other direction, back into London, to hop across the north of London and head up the east coast main line towards Scotland. We headed across London, watching people heading home on the tube after a night out. Let's have a little look around the room here on board the Caledonian Sleeper. The rooms on the Caledonian Sleeper aren't huge by any stretch, but they're still fairly comfortable. There's a single bed with a bunk that folds out above to make a bunk bed. You also have the option of booking a double bed, which is quite a bit more expensive. Around the bed are these little portable device storage shelves. Above both beds is a reading light, USB charging socket and a switch for the main light. The bottom bunk also has heating controls and a dimmer switch for the main lights. At the bottom end of the bed there's a sink beside the window with a pull-out desk underneath. There's a bin under there as well and a welcome bottle of water. At the foot end of the bed are also double power sockets, USB charging sockets and another light switch. 
There's also an alarm button, but don't make the mistake like I did of getting the light switch and the call button mixed up in the dark. Club rooms all feature an ensuite bathroom with a shower and a toilet. The bench lifts up to reveal the toilet underneath. The bathroom isn't huge, but for someone who spent a lot of time in caravans, it wasn't too hard to get used to. There's a little amenity bag that contains an eye mask, earplugs, and a really nice set of toiletries, as well as a sleep spray for the pillow. Breakfast is served either in your room or in the club car, depending on what you order. I ordered a bacon roll with coffee to arrive at my room at 6.45am, giving me enough time to get it eaten before arriving into Glasgow. As we rolled out of London into Bedfordshire, I settled down and attempted to get some sleep. I was awoken a few hours later by silence as we pulled into a deserted Newcastle upon Tyne. There's no scheduled stop here, but we were running quite a bit early, so I spent around 40 minutes here. While we waited, the southbound sleeper service also pulled into the station. I went back to sleep as we pulled out and was awoken to broad daylight across southern Scotland. To my surprise, it was only 4am, but thanks to being almost at the summer solstice, it never gets completely dark in the north of England and Scotland. Oh, woken up. I thought it was later than it is. It was broad daylight outside, as you can see. But it's 4.30 in the morning, so clearly the sun rises a lot earlier in the summer up here in Scotland than it does down in the south. Two or three hours till we arrive in Glasgow. We are at the moment, we are somewhere between Berwick upon Tweed and Edinburgh, just snooting around the coast of Scotland heading towards Edinburgh. So I'm going to get up in a minute. And go through and have a shower, see what there's like on the train, that should be an interesting experience and breakfast will be here in a little while. I rather enjoyed just laying on the bed watching the world go by. An hour later and we were pulling into Edinburgh's beautiful Waverley station. shower which was quite an interesting experience on a train the first time I've ever actually had a shower on a train so new experience it's quite strange you have to kind of have to keep pressing the button to keep the water coming like you do um, in campsites and things like that the shower pressure and the temperature was okay it has flooded the bathroom a little bit so little tip number one there for you make sure you use the bathroom before you have your shower because I can't go in again now um, without getting my feet all wet again so that's just one thing to think about. Tip number two, it's quite easy to get a little bit complacent when you're on the train. and Keep this window open just here, enjoying the scenery as it goes flying past at 80 miles an hour. But don't do as I did and leave the window blinds open while you have a shower because there's every chance, just like me, you could step out of the shower and be stopped in a station and give some people a really unpleasant view <laughs> for this time of the morning. But we're here in Edinburgh Waverley Station. I think we've got about an hour here now. Um, we are really early. We weren't due in here for about another hour, so I think we're waiting here right now to let the timetable catch up a little bit with us. The Edinburgh service was cancelled tonight due to some issues with the wheels on some coaches, so we didn't have many passengers to drop off here. A couple of people did still get off here, however, presumably after being rebooked onto this service. We got some great views of the fourth bridges in the distance as we headed across Scotland towards Glasgow. Thanks to a combination of using the East Coast Line and us not having to stop to split the train, we had numerous stops along the route to allow the timetable to catch up with us. So we are approaching now Carstairs in Scotland and this is usually the place where the Caledonian sleeper stops, splits up into two trains, one goes to Edinburgh and one goes to Glasgow, but of course we've come the other way tonight because of the West Coast Mainline works. So 
the train would have split in Edinburgh had we had an Edinburgh train. There's been a few problems with these new carriages lately. They've only been in service for a few weeks and I've had quite a few issues with them and last week there was a bit of an issue where the emergency brakes came on and loads of the wheels and the trains ended up getting flats on them and they've had to go off to have work done and have the wheels fixed. So tonight there is no Edinburgh train, even though we stopped at Edinburgh, nobody got on or off there. The train wasn't split there like it should have been. We have headed straight through to Glasgow and Carstairs. The next stop is a little station in the middle of nowhere, but it is the station where usually the Cali sleeper stops and is split into two trains to go, one up towards Edinburgh and one up towards Glasgow. As we pulled into Motherwell, my breakfast arrived. Breakfast has arrived. I'd gone for a bacon roll with coffee, which also came with a muffin. It was all pretty delicious. Not long after Motherwell, we entered the suburbs of Glasgow. Glasgow has two main stations, Queen Street and Central, and the Caledonian sleeper uses the Central Station. It's a beautiful old station right in the heart of the city. My trip tonight cost me £205 for a journey of 448 miles. This works out at a cost per mile of 45 pence per mile, which is pretty expensive compared to flying, but remember this includes your accommodation as well. I'd arrived in Glasgow just nine hours after leaving London. Would I take the train over the plane again? Well. It was really nice not having to rush for an early flight, and it saved me the cost of a hotel room the night before. Alright, so here at Glasgow Central in Scotland. We made it. The scenery was incredible, and I arrived right into the heart of Glasgow. I didn't sleep particularly well, however, but regular travellers presumably get used to sleeping on a train. Here then at Glasgow Central Station, a lot more beautiful than Euston Station that we left behind about 10 hours ago. In typical fashion, I've arrived in Scotland and it is raining. I really enjoyed that trip up here on the Caledonian Sleeper. It was great to actually get a train where you can sleep on the train for 10 hours or so, although I didn't really get much sleep because I was too busy looking out of the window, but it's so much better than rushing around trying to get a flight up here at stupid o'clock in the morning to be there sitting around for two hours before taking out all of your bits and pieces to go through the scanners and stuff it's just a lot more relaxing affair and you get a decent night's sleep as well as some decent food and drink as well i really hope you enjoyed this little ride up to scotland with caledonian sleeper let me know what you thought of this video down in the comment section below would you like me to do any more rail trip reports let me know in the comments down below thanks very much for watching take care and i'll see you next time here on in flight video